Hey, so what is going on everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how to install Hinkaku on the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV. Now, for the prerequisites, you're going to need an active internet connection, a PS TV or Vita on 3.6, and you're going to need to have a memory card for your system. Now, I want to prelude this by saying that this is still quite a new modification as well, so this is a homebrew enabler. This is not going to let you magically play PS Vita ISOs or PSP ISOs or access the EPSP on the system itself. However, this is also quite a new modification and it has been out for less than two weeks. So there is going to be a lot more development coming out after I make this video. So this video might be a bit outdated by the time you see it if it's going to be in like six months or a year because I don't know what's going to happen at that point. But right now we do have a bunch of homebrew and pretty awesome emulators running on this system. I'll also say that before you install this, you are going to get a warning saying that this does technically violate your system's warranty so keep that in mind and I would recommend signing out of PSN or using a spare system if you have that on hand due to the fact that this will actually show what you're using when you're running homebrew while you're signing into PlayStation Network so just be careful of that don't say I didn't warn you. Now the install process for this is extremely simple when you have your system up and running and connected what you need to do is open up your internet browser go to hengaku.xyz and hit the install button. When you hit the install button, you're gonna be prompted with this warning. Go ahead and hit okay if you want to continue on with this, and it's going to go ahead and run an exploit in your internet browser right here. Now this might crash, and if it does crash, just restart your system and try again, but what should happen if it is successful is it will say welcome to Hinkaku, and you can hit okay. Then you're going to get this error message, but it's going to be continuing with this process. When it gets up to 100%, hit okay, and then if all goes well, it should crash out to this black screen where it's going to install a new bubble. Once that is all complete, it will kick you out of the internet browser and you can go to your home screen where you will find the molecular shell bubble. Open that up and you're going to see this familiar looking thing if you've ever used PSP Filer and you can now hit the select button and open up a FTP server on your Vita. Now our next step is going to be installing Homebrew. Down below in the description I'm going to put a link to VPK Mare and you all can also share some favorite VPK sites but all Vita native Homebrew is in VPK format. What you want to do is you want to on your computer or wherever you're doing this download the VPK files that you want for your Homebrew and then open up your favorite FTP programs such as FileZilla and from there enter in the IP address and the port number. You don't need a username or password and hit OK. When you're in there you want to go ahead and go into UX0 because UX0 is your Vita's memory card. When you're in there just create a folder of any name you can call it VPK or install or install VPKs and when you're in there transfer over the VPK files from your computer to your Vita. Once you're done transferring those over go ahead and go back to your Vita, exit out of the FTP server and then go to UX0 and your folder where you put over the VPK files. When you select your VPK files, select them with the X button and then press X again to install them. Once your VPK files are installed, you can go ahead, exit out of Molecular Shell, go back to your home screen and you will now have more bubbles for whatever homebrew you ended up installing. So you can now have fun with that. Now there are a few downsides to this. One of the main ones being if you fully power down your Vita and bring it back up, you will not be able to access any of the homebrew. And to do that, what you need to do is when you fully power your Vita back on, you need to go to Molecular Shell, hit the install button, and it is going to run the exploit again in your internet browser. Once it does that, you will have access to everything again, so keep in mind this is a tethered modification, and you do need that internet access. Now, some people might complain about that, but honestly, it's going to be just a matter of time before we can make it fully offline, because right now, we do have the source code, and you can set up your own server, either locally or on a website, so the code is out there to do with as you please. Another downside to this is is this is right now only for 3.6 so due to that as I said you do need to be on firmware 3.6 if you're on a lower firmware I'd recommend upgrading and if you're on a higher firmware I can't help you right now at the time of recording this video because there is no higher firmware out and finally as I said this has not been designed to facilitate piracy directly so I'm not saying that it's impossible but I'm saying right now this moment in time while recording it it does not do that so you cannot play any PS Vita ISOs PSP ISOs or fully access the PSP emulator on here. Those are completely separate things. But you can run Vita native homebrew and emulators easily, which is not something that we had access to prior as easily as we do now. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If this tutorial helped you out, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. And if you did not like the tutorial or homebrew or the Vita or anything like that, 
go ahead and hit the dislike button because there's that for you too. Anyways, signing off real this time. Later, everyone.